Hey, this is Tim Destacio, and did you know that you can use MeasureQuick to check the operating sear of any given system? I'll show you how. You can simply use MeasureQuick Classic to perform this test. You don't even have to gauge up. This is going to be a non-invasive test. In your system profile screen, you will need to tell MeasureQuick some things about the system that you're working on, namely what the refrigerant is, the tonnage, the type of metering device, and what the nameplate sear is. In this case, we're working on an R410A around a 13 sear and three and a half ton. Now let's talk about probe placement. So the first thing we want to do is put in our air probes. This is our return air probe. And if you notice, I've put it right here in the plenum. And that's because we want to be reading our capacity coming out of the system, our equipment capacity, not our delivery capacity. So you'll notice that I will be taking my readings right here at the plenums on both sides of the units, not coming in and out of the grill. My supply probe has been placed right here in the supply collar takeoff that's coming right off the coil. But if you notice, it's not in line of sight of the coil. So we're still reading the temperature, but we don't have that radiant cooling effect that might affect some of the temperatures that this probe is going to read. And again, the reason why we're taking these readings right here at the plenums instead of at the grills is because we don't want to factor in any losses or gains of heat in the ductwork as it runs through an unconditioned space. Now we're in a crawl space right here, so it's probably not going to be that significant. But if we were in a hot attic with not very well insulated uh, ductwork, then we would pick up a lot of heat in that supply and return duct and that could affect our readings. Next, you're gonna place your suction and your liquid line probes and get the unit running and settled out and stable. If you have a third probe, you can use that to read outside air. If you don't, just take the temperature and enter it in measure quick and I'll show you where next. In the outdoor measurement screen, you can enter in manually or map a dedicated probe to your outdoor temperature. If you do have a dedicated probe, then it'll automatically display that temperature. And if you don't, that'll be a field that you can enter your temperature manually. You can either take the temperature with another device, or in a pinch, you can grab the weather data for that zip code. But it's really best to have a dedicated probe to your outdoor temperature. Now, if you'll notice, MeasureQuick is pretty happy with how the system is performing so far. We've got that elusive green checker flag on all our screens. But if you notice, our electrical performance screen still shows gauges that don't read anything. And that's because we haven't taken any electrical readings. In order to determine what your operating sear is, you've got to first know what your BTU output is, which we already have. But then you need to find out how much power that the system is consuming to make those BTUs. And that's where your electrical readings will come in. Reading wattage is a huge part of this. You cannot get your operating sear without reading wattage, which means that you're going to need a power quality meter. Now this is the power quality meter that I'm using at the time. This is the IDVM 550 by Subco, but there are other brands that make them as well. In your Measure Quick toolbox, you will need to make sure that your power quality meter is connected to Bluetooth and reading in Measure Quick. To take those electrical readings in Measure Quick, go to your electrical performance screen and then hit the plus sign to add some readings. Do not connect your meter to the system until you get to this screen. You should read all zeros. To get the wattage from the outdoor unit, you want to clip your amp clamp from your power quality meter on one of your legs coming in. Now it's important to read right in the middle of the clamp in a good spot where it's going to read accurately. Now your life will be a lot easier if you get some leads that have alligator clamps on them because you're going to need to leave your leads on L1 and L2. Just anywhere either on the contactor or the disconnect will be fine, but you want to be able to work hands-free and not have to be tied down to holding leads. If you don't have leads that have alligator clips, you can use a set of jumper wires and safely connect them to your normal test leads. Once you're reading amps and volts, your meter will calculate wattage and tell Measure Quick how much wattage the outdoor unit is consuming. Once you've captured that, then go to your indoor unit and do it all over again. You'll see that those gauges that read SEER, EER, and fan efficacy finally have some values to them. You remember that Measure Quick was pretty content with the performance of our system before, but now that we've coupled some wattage readings along with that, that unit isn't running so hot. Remember, this is a 13 SEER unit and it's only operating at 10 SEER. Measure Quick doesn't like that. What could cause a 13 SEER unit to only run at 10 SEER? 
Well, Measure Quick will help us determine that as well. Compressor power factor is too low. Now, understanding power factor is a video for a whole other day. But essentially, this is telling us that the compressor is not running efficiently from an electrical standpoint. It's doing the work, but it's consuming too much power to do it. What could cause a compressor to do this? One of the main reasons is the run capacitor is starting to fail. If this process seems overly complicated, let me assure you that it's not. After you've done it for two or three times, you'll be an expert. Just make sure that you have a power quality meter and a couple of leads that have alligator clips on them. That'll make it a lot easier. But I hope you can also see that this is a powerful diagnostic tool and a sales tool. You can help communicate to your customer what needs to be done to the system, even if the system needs to be replaced. You can show them that it's not operating at the efficiency that it once was. And now it's time to go for a more efficient model. Or if a needed repair needs to take place, you can show them that this is how you're going to save some money in your energy bills. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, comment below. As always, stay safe.